Top 10 Sexual Babas Swamis of India 10. Caught in the Act, Swami Nithyananda This godman was corrupted and branded red by Sun TV on the day of March 10, 2010, news channel. With occasional dives of kisses accompanied by other such movements, even a godman needs a hot full-body massage. Swami was very blessed to get it performed by a famous actress. I can hear these sighs. Nithyananda later said in an interview that when being unrobed and massaged, he was in a state of samadhi, i.e. trance, anyone will be, right. Swami produced a surprising discovery with the burden mounting that he was simply impotent. That guy has a nerve, we've got to give him that. And not all of this, condoms, drugs, and other secrets revealed the story of why this, playboy, has been in real trouble. When Arati Rao, an alleged rape by a former devotee, Swami went into hiding, digging and extending the ditch in which he was. Since they were goggle-eyed as the police went to nab the man in his ashram to discover a heap of contraceptives and ganja drugs inside the premises. And then the response to the enigmatic query came. It was Arati Rao who had secretly captured the unusually hot moments of the Swami. Naughty girl. 9. Let's play brother-sister, Ashram Bapu. In India, he's our new favorite. When making a speech on the 2012 Delhi gang rape, this notorious godman struck the nerve of any rational Indian, claiming that the girl raped was also to be blamed. He said that the girl should have called the brothers of the culprits and begged them to stop. This could have saved her dignity and life. He said, can one hand clap, to explain his disgusting theory. I don't believe so at all. We don't think Swami, either, particularly because he's been arrested recently for pedophilia. This is what is considered tit for tat in general. Seven more girls spilled out their horror tales, including compulsory oral, to the police in early January, gathering the declaration of about 100 people, enough to create a case against this self-styled godman. 8. Like father, like son, Narayan Sai. Asaram Bapu has demonstrated that the pull of blood relationships is thick and silent. Two sisters filed complaints about rape, sexual harassment, and unlawful detention against Sai and his father, Asaram. Sai had disclosed sexual ties with eight of his female followers, interrogated in police questioning and under the hawk-eyed presence of his estranged wife, and in an OMG moment admitted to even fathering a child with one of his Sevika's disciple. 7. Oiled all over, Sathya Sai Baba. Sai Baba was not a notorious beginner, yes, he is dead. Plunge into Wikipedia. Under the, criticism and conflict, heading, you can find a complete 1,000-word list of accused misdeeds. In 2002, an interview with Alaya Ram, who alleged sexual abuse by this Swami, was presented in a documentary produced by Denmark's national TV and radio broadcaster, Denmark's radio, doctor, called, Seduced by Sai Baba. One of Swami's critics once again claimed in a BBC documentary titled The Secret Swami that an ex-devotee had confined him to the sexual behavior of the repellent Swami when he had, put the oil on his hands, ordered me to lower my pants and rubbed my genitals with the oil. Even a multi-millionaire devotee of Sai Baba strongly believes in these rumors. 6. Believe it or not, it's the, Guru, Rajneesh. In fact, this singular Swami was known as the, Sex Guru, and a newsmaker was quiet due to his controversial lectures in his ashrams. And you thought the Swamis were conservative, didn't you? Initially, some groups were permitted to have romantic relationships with the participants in their Pune ashram, which is thriving like never before. Unlike other religious supporters, Osho claimed that psychological repression contributes to the denial of vital emotions that then rear their ugly heads under some other guise, such as rape, he added that sexual repression occurs in sex-obsessed cultures. 5. Exposed, Kripalu Maharaj. He died in November 2013 at the age of 91 not before being exposed by an American follower Karen Johnson in her book, Sex, Lies, and Two Hindu Gurus, how I was conned by a dangerous cult, and why I will not keep their secrets. The novel focuses on the bedroom rituals of the Swami. Karen said in an interview, since he is considered to be Krishna's avatar, 
His intimate touch and so on is supposed to be a gift of divine love or prema dan. He offers private audiences to women he can control by physical contact and blesses them. He invites women to give him Sharan Siva, a form of ritual of massage that typically involves sexual contact. For the past 15 years, Karen has had a really poor experience at his ashram. She said she was a member of the Council of Jagadguru Kripalu and spent 15 years of her life in her JKP ashram in Austin City. Wonder what took her to come out so long? Back in 2002, when she visited him in May of that year, Kripalu was accused of raping and molesting a 22-year-old Guyanese woman in a prayer room at the house where he was staying in San Fernando. 4. Intensive Swami, Aichadhari Baba Bimanand. This self-styled Swami apparently ran a prostitute racket during the teaching of spirituality, or so it was alleged back in 2010. It was said that a corporation worth 500 crore rupees was worth 5 billion United States dollars. He used to provide high-end customers throughout Delhi with women, including air hostesses, students, and housewives and received approximately 2.5 lakh rupees, 4,000 United States dollars per day. In his sex racket, Aichadhari Baba raised a mind-boggling sum of Rs. 25,000 crores, 25 billion United States dollars. Swami Bimanand, 39, whose real name is Sri Murath Dwivedi, began working as a security guard in Delhi in 1988 before he was arrested for operating a sex racket in 1997. He gave up religion purely as a cover for his sleazy dealings after he got out of prison. Police claimed to have retrieved five diaries from him that included some prostitutes' names, phone numbers, and even prices. Bullseye, down to another Swami. 3. Mafia-style Swami, Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. In 2002, when an anonymous letter reached the Prime Minister of India, accusing this Swami of rape and mass sexual abuse, alleged malpractices at the Dara first came to light. There are between 35 and 40 girls here who have dedicated themselves to Dara. In her letter, the woman wrote, adding, My life is in danger, so I will not reveal my name. We seem to be devised, then treated like prostitutes. Since then, the name of Ram Rahim has been used in many court trials, including the July 2002 assassination of a journalist. This guy seems grave. 2. When the Beatles turned to a Swami, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. John Lennon of the Beatles had written a song, Sexy Sadie, during his visit to India, which he wanted to actually name, Maharishi, as it was based on the Swami itself. By becoming, spiritual counselors to the Beatles in 1968, Yogi made it to the limelight. The Beatles learned during their stay that the Maharishi had made sexual advances towards Mia Farrow, but later Harrison, Paul McCartney, and Cynthia Lennon said they thought that the report was invented. The original title was changed at George Harrison's request. Once, Lennon said of the album, that was Maharishi inspired. When we got our bags packed and were leaving, I wrote it. Before I left India, this was the last piece I wrote. Instead of singing Maharishi what you did, you made a fool. I just called him, Sexy Sadie. I left the Maharishi with a bad taste. He told Rolling Stone that when the Maharishi asked why he was leaving, he answered, Oh, if you're so cosmic, you'll know why. Swami was later discarded by the band. After several years, John eventually said, There is no guru. You're supposed to believe in yourself. In your own temple, you have to go down to your own deity. It's all up to you, mate. Nice advice mate, I suggest. 1. The This One Makes Sense Swami, Ravi Shankar. None other than Ravi Shankar is the guy who tops the list of 10 curious Indian Swami scandals. Spiritual Swami Ravi Shankar wrote on Twitter last December, when India's Supreme Court overturned the 2009 landmark adjudication of the decriminalization of homosexuality, homosexuality in Hindu society has never been considered an offense. In reality, from Hari Hara, Vishnu and Shiva, was born Lord Ayyappa. He later tweeted, Homosexuality, not a crime in any Smriti. There are male and female components in all. 
tendencies emerge and can change according to their superiority. In another post, Sri Sri wrote, because of their sexual orientation, nobody should face prejudice. It is ridiculous to be called a criminal for this. Instead of giving a preposterous gut-revolting remark like the other swamis, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar protested against such barbarism through his social initiative VFABI during the 2012 Delhi gang rape. For the record, this Swami was recognized for his charitable work by many nations, and back in 2008, he was also the honorary citizen and goodwill ambassador of the city of Houston, USA. Thanks for watching these Babas. For more informative videos please like, share and subscribe my channel.